Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be doing a new drive and actually like new new drive and that is Mitsubishi E800 drive. This E800 drive is one of their latest, uh, latest release drives that uh, they have been released and I think it replaces, I believe it replaces the D and E700 series because for the price uh, that I paid for this is roughly about 145 pounds. This is a single phase uh, drive of, and it's an E version. So, and uh, that used to be a D version's price is about 145 pounds here in UK. So I think there will be no a uh, uh, no D version, but don't, don't quote me on that. And plus the fan now is optional. As you can see, the fan is not there. So that option, that, that, that thing is, I'm not sure it's optional or they just think that there's no need for it. So we are going to be doing a three part video as usual. So it's going to be a, uh, no, I'm lying. We're going to be doing four part video for this, uh, for this drive because there's something cool in the drive, which I'm going to tell you in a minute. So in the first part, we're going to be, uh, uh doing, uh, obviously the drive commissioning and, and, uh, full, uh, setup and running in a local mode. And in the second video is going to be two, three wire control. Plus we're going to be using potentiometer. Third video going to be using a uh, setting up the, um, uh, speed up and down control with the two buttons and uh, multi frequency. And in fourth video, we're going to be checking this drive out for it's got PLC inside it. So we definitely, definitely going to be checking that out because, uh, in RF configurator, they have added our uh, option in there which uh, allows you to program this uh, drive like a PLC. And I'll show you all the paperwork and how that works in uh, in uh, uh, fourth part of the video. Because the one thing what I do love about this drive, it is, it's got a USB in here. So it's, 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 you basically need just the micro USB cable plug straight into the drive, straight into your computer and off you go, you got full access to uh, uh yeah um, the, the 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 controls of the drive and everything else that comes with it plus the software is free and you don't need any silly bloody which i absolutely dislike the fact that you have to have some sort of weird interfaces and this drive does not need any of it so uh all you need is usb cable straight in your computer out of configurator which i'm going to be leaving the link in below uh, below in a fourth video Download it for free and you are well on your way to get this drive up running and do pretty much whatever you want with it because there is so much you can do with it. So without further ado, oh yeah, and before we uh, get started, uh, this drive is uh, widely available now on a company called LC Automations. I'm going to leave a link to their website uh, below. There's, I don't know anyone else in UK is uh, selling them yet, but you can go, buy them from a company called LC Automations and you'll be able to access their website. Uh, with a link even in the description below and if by any chance you guys want a 10 percent discount when you purchase this definitely get in touch with Regis electronics as we are going to be able to help you out with that so without further ado let's get started <music> Alright, drive is already set up and wired in. So the first thing, as we always do, we're gonna look at uh, how what, what it, um, uh, connections and all the uh, all the uh, terminals are in here. So as you can see there in the front panel there, there has been a hell of a change. So they have uh, rearranged pretty much everything how things are looking but uh, nevertheless looks good so uh, regarding uh, wiring in here right these two points in here those are used for dc reactor and uh, brake unit uh, obviously you've got that line going in uh, here in uh, l1 and uh, neutral going l2 and then a vuw going to your motor right here uh this connector block in here this is where you can add your additional cards and uh you've got a little two switches in here this is where you uh, set up your uh, uh analog inputs uh, between uh, current and volts and things like that so this little switch in here that will be for your uh, sink or source pu connector for external uh, display unit if you wish to use it outside the panel somewhere Right, and then we can start with the terminals in the front for the controls. So S1, S2 and then PC, those are used for a uh, safety input. And SO and SOC, those are going to be for the safety output. 
and uh, run FU and SC those are used for monitoring and uh, these uh, it all are digital inputs in here as you can see all the uh, it, it, rather than putting the numbers on it which should be shares but names on it what it is more or less preset AM in five uh, those that is for the analog output and these in front in here those are for your analog inputs and also later A B and C is your digital uh, basically relay outputs, not digital relay outputs. So uh, that's uh, regarding where we, with all the terminals and also we've got the wheel in here for controls which, are, which we're going to get to in a minute. Before we, before we power up there's one more really good feature that uh, Mitsubishi has implemented. As you can see that there's only one part this time. Yay! To remove from the bottom and also then you have your uh, front part in here. Another one you get for those who love setting up pre-setting the drives for their customers if i can find my usb for those who do that yes yeah, so ha you no longer need to power up the drive to program uh the oop, to program the drive for uh, within the pc and by the way i very strongly advise you guys get the e-manual and fr configurator because it is so much easier to set your drive up and get you going with all the explanations blah blah we're going to look into that a bit more in the video four so if you can see down here if i plug into my usb a standard usb micro usb will do as you can see the light comes on and your drive is fully operational when it comes down to programming so you are now uh, ready to fire up your IFR configurator and it is pretty much good to go for setting up so you no longer need to take out of the box and wire it all up just to get programming so that is really good addition so uh, let me power up the drive and we crack on and have a look at the front display all right we just powered that one right up now so um it's quite straight what does he always used to be front wheel to change things around and uh obviously the pu between you go between the external and uh, jog and internal so uh pu is in the internal a ext is external so uh Another thing, another thing they have changed. There's quite a lot of parameters you can now change while the drive, uh, the, well, the motor is running, which I'm going to be showing that a little bit in a minute when we're going to be playing with the uh, carrier frequency. Uh, mode is pretty much set your inner parameters. Set, obviously, as like as, as before. Set, change, set, and it will save. So uh, I'm by clicking a mode and mode again you will exit it out and you got start run and stop and also you got a reset in here and this little jog wheel in here has obviously changed going between the parameters and also you can adjust a frequency and that's pretty much covers up the front keypad okay now we then have we have done that let's do the uh, perform factory reset and we to do that is just click the mode you're going to be pretty much in a parameter like uh, that so go backwards until you see all clear let's set put it to one set and there we go it, it, it cleared the whole thing out so uh the, now click the mode you leave and that's how you've done a full factory reset having done that next we're going to be editing all the parameters and multi parameters into the drive so we can perform the auto tune so auto tune is really good so that the uh, motor and uh, drive pretty much understands each other very well so that, that's a, a more more less scientific way i can explain what auto tune is so try to do auto tune as uh, much as you can so um for setting up if quick we're going to check a couple of parameters on the way to the setup so let's go into mode uh, let's go to parameter one, which is going to be our max frequency, parameter minimum frequency, and then we can go. And uh, if you can see down here, which I pass, this is where your base frequency is, uh, what your drive is running at. So uh, we'll be uh, we'll be getting the, back to that in a minute. And then we go straight to. Uh, you can go to the if you have some sort of specific motor that uh, that you think that uh, needs specific uh, train. Uh, assignments into the drive mitsubishi had out outlined quite a bit of uh, their motors into it so uh 
Uh, for the standard motor, the main setting is a zero, but if there is uh, more different types of motors that you can uh, edit, uh, do check out uh, parameter 71 in a manual and I'll explain what each of those numbers are. We are a standard motor, we're keeping at that. So I already edited the numbers in here, just so because it takes quite a bit long time to do that. So is, uh, that's uh, this 80 is going to be your uh, yeah, motor capacity, which is kilowatts. 81 is going to be your uh, uh, number of poles. We are VF control, so we don't need to change that. It's by the uh, default, stays as that. 82 uh, is going to be a thermal overload, which is your uh, motor... Um, uh, current which says on your data plate minus 1.03 and the next one is 83 which is a motor rate of volts by default that is standing at 200 again whatever your country you are make sure you edit the correct numbers so I we are here at 230 and the following the last one is an 84 which is where you would set up the uh, motor rate of frequency and that's why I showed you the uh, parameter 3 if it stays at 999, you will use that uh, frequency to uh, understand the motor frequency. So uh, I'm not going to change that because he will be reading from that parameter. So, but if you want to change the manual and your motor is differently, then uh, definitely adjust it to whatever frequency your motor is. So having done that, the next one is up is 96. And that's pretty much all the data the motor needs, uh, for not motor, the drive needs to pretty much uh, get your drive going. And that one we go in here, we're going to go in, uh, there's a 1 for the standard motor and 11 for the vector, uh, VF control motor. So we are doing that. So by selecting that and enter it and then press run. As you can see, 12 is, in, uh, is doing his business and 13 should be the pass. If any errors appears, it will be different numbers than 13. And here we go. So if you see the run button is flashing. So it, it tells you to click the stop. And once you click the stop, that is pretty much done. And if you uh, exit the menu all the time, and every time you want to go back to 96, it will show you 13. That means the auto tune has been done. And that's how we set up the drive ready to go for our motor. Having done that, only things left is to run. So by clicking the run, here we go. That's it, it runs to change the speed with your wheel and you have to click the set button to accept it. As you can see the motor is, motor is quite noisy because its carrier frequency is really low and the, what is carrier frequency is the same time as a switching frequency which you can adjust within the drive but again it comes with its own consequences so it's something that you look, uh, need to look out for. The higher the carrier frequency the harder the switching has to work inside the drive and uh, as a normal thermodynamics work, the harder they work, the more heat they will produce. So uh, if you like to have your motor quiet, which I'm going to show you right now. So if we go to, we're actually going to start to run the motor. And we're going to go into uh, your parameter 72. As you can see, the carrier frequency is at 1. If you want to see what that is in uh, kilohertz, uh, definitely check out the manual. But I have found, if you, see, if you, if you start going up, you see, the noise of the motor is changing because the higher carrier frequency, the smoother the sound cell, the wave. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain it as quick as, uh, as I can because uh, there's a lot more that, to it than just uh, uh, explain it like that. But in a, in a simple words, carrier frequency improves the sound cell, the wave, which improves the noise of the motor. And I think my perfect, what I found for a motor, my motor in there, it runs at carrier frequency for the setting here is eight and what that con converts to kilohertz I'm not sure so that's how I found to be the smoothest run for my motor obviously you can go higher but ladies and gentlemen be sure to understand what carrier frequency is and what sort of uh, um, uh, impact does it do that does to your drive because the higher the current frequency the a lot more heat can be produced within the drive. So if you want to have a nice and quiet motor, I would suggest to abide your drives at least 30% bigger than your motor because that will reduce the stress to your uh, switches and your carrier frequency can be higher. So um, carrier frequency or switching frequency, whichever way uh, you, you want to uh, look at it. But the drive is smart to understand what it needs to do when the things start getting overheating. So you, you can start seeing the motor noise changing because the drive will automatically adjust uh, back uh, down the carrier frequency to comp to to pretty much uh, cover the heat increases and once the heat goes down below a certain level it'll go back to normal what you set at so basically it will monitor 
as much as it can itself and keep your drive pretty much safe. So uh, that will be it, ladies and gentlemen, for this video. I hope I have explained everything as accurate as I can and uh, it makes a sense and gets you going. It is a really good drive. Mitsubishi has done uh, pretty cool things. There's obviously, there's even an app for this and we might be gonna be checking out one day. But this is their latest model, so uh, well done for them. Uh, it looks good, it, it, it works well and uh, not much change regarding the design, design as well, but I'm pretty sure they have done so uh, quite a lot of uh, inside out changes themselves. If you can look at the front, they have completely redesigned the whole uh, layout of the IOs. So I haven't said that, ladies and gentlemen, if you like that video, please smash that like. And uh, if you didn't like then smash that dislike and uh, comment below what you like, what you don't like. Because any comments you make below, uh, even criticizing and things like that makes me and make a better, better, better video for you. Any questions and anything you would like, would like to know a bit more about it, definitely leave in the comments below and I will answer them as accurate and as soon as I can. So other than that, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.